welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys. I hope you're all still feeling very, very good indeed. And we do have a full Barca news roundup coming up today where we are going to talk about some injuries. Unfortunately, we do have an injury update. There's always one of those, isn't there? There's always one on the very near horizon. We're also going to be talking in some detail about the goalkeeping situation now at Barca, again mentioning Iñaki Peña. And is there a big signing in Coming for Barca over the next few months, we're going to be talking all about it right here. It's coming up for you. So let's do it. Now today's video, guys, is once again coming to you courtesy of Manscaped, where there is still time to get 20% off your order just in time for Christmas, simply there by using the code TALKFCB at checkout. That will grab you 20% off your order. And if you do order now, do not worry, you will get your order comfortably in time for the big day, courtesy of Manscaped Speedy Delivery. And whether it's the Lawnmower 5.0 full body trimmer, that you're after, the all-in-one tool there that will get the job done, or there's the beard hedger. That does exactly what it says on the tin there, ideal for styling, for trimming, all of that good stuff, or the handyman. That is more there of a compact face shaver, ideal for those on the move, those travelling quite frequently, and whatever it is that you're looking for, or whoever it is that you're buying for, I can guarantee you guys that you will find something great for the occasion on Manscaped. And if you do follow the link there that's in the description, now that will take you straight over to the Manscaped website and that automatically applies your discount and indeed guys it's a big big help to me Manscaped they're a massive help here on the channel so that I can continue to bring you the videos and continue doing what I do thank you indeed for all of your support throughout the year and a big thank you too to Manscaped but if we do indeed begin with a bit of an unfortunate news topic in my opinion because there was a little bit of excitement a few days ago when it was rumored that Tepas was going to step down from his position as president of La Liga. A lot of people got really excited and hopeful about that. Could this be the end of Tebas? But unfortunately, it was a false alarm because he only actually did that for strategic reasons, simply now so that he could run again in the next election for La Liga president. And well, I'm sad to say that's exactly what's happened. Tebas has now been re-elected as La Liga president until 2027. Once again, there was no other candidate. He was elected unopposed. How much longer will this happen, guys? How much longer will this guy be in control of the whole league? How can this continue to happen? No other candidate there. What is going on inside of La Liga? But Tebas is here to stay, and that is not good. However, guys, if we do indeed return to Sunday's game against Atletico Madrid, when actually in that game it's now emerged that Ronald Araujo suffered a small fracture to his cheekbone against Atleti. I think it happened there when he was on the floor. Marcos Llorente's boot actually connected with his face. It looked like a really painful knock there. But, you know, Araujo being Araujo obviously completed the match. You know, not for a single second in his mind was he thinking, oh, well, I'm going to go off now. He was going to soldier on. Now, the idea, interestingly, is that he's going to be available on Sunday against Girona. He's going to start that game. He will not undergo any surgical procedure, but it's very possible there and likely that we'll see Araujo with a protective mask on. That may last for a number of weeks there in order to keep playing right up until that Christmas break in La Liga. We know we need Araujo, especially now with Inigo Martinez out. And the idea in his mind is simply to keep on playing. But somebody, though, who has not been able to avoid surgery, unfortunately, is Mark andre Tastegan. It has now been confirmed by the club that he's going to have surgery on that lower back issue, because apparently there, with that back problem that Tastegan has, it's quite serious, because it also affects his leg as well, and he hasn't really responded to conservative treatment on it. That's what they've been doing over the past few days since he got back from the international break. They've been working really hard on Tastegan, but things aren't getting better, so the only step now that is left to fix the issue, it is indeed surgery. And Tastegan said we've had intense conversations with the medical team at the club and with various experts from the outside too. And we decided here to undergo a surgical procedure. He said the break, obviously, it annoys me, but it's the right and safe decision in order to come back in the best condition for my club and for the national team. And the word right now on Tastegan is that he will now miss two to three months as a result of that surgery.
surgery. So that is quite a serious problem there for him. If things go well, it looks like he'd be back in time for the Champions League round of 16 matches. But if not, it depends on surgery. It depends on his recovery time. He may miss those games depending on how long that recovery takes. But of course, we all wish him all the best right here and a very speedy recovery. And now the next question is, well, what happens now in that goalkeeping role? Because I was actually pretty surprised, guys, in the media there when it was reported that Ter Stegen will indeed be out for several months, that already in, you know, news publications there like Sport, they were coming out and saying Barca already have a list of candidates that they'd be looking at as somebody to come in and be the number one goalkeeper. People there like David De Gea, who's a free agent right now, Ramsdale, who's out of favour at Arsenal, Kasper Schmeichel, Bono, Roman Berkey, these are all names that we've heard of. Of course, they're decent keepers, no doubt about that. And of course, we will need another keeper either way because we can't survive only with one at the club. But like I say, these were being talked about there as coming in and being the number one. And I would just like to say, when of any of those keepers in recent times, you know, I'm talking about right now, the players that they are today, when have they recently had a performance like Iñaki Peña did the other night against Atletico Madrid? And I cannot see for any reason here why we would look at the outside to take on the number one role. Iñaki Peña is right there and he's ready for it right now. We also can't forget, guys, with Peña, the underrated thing about him right now as well, he knows the club, he already understands the surroundings, because you think about a keeper there coming in from the outside, having never experienced Barca, they don't know about the pressures, they don't know about the expectations, they've never even played in the style, maybe, that you want to have in your goalkeeper at this club. Iñaki Peña has grown up here, he understands all of that, and especially now, he's had a run of games, he's also handled the pressure well, we've seen that he can do that, so I think here, Barca have to count on Iñaki Peña, and there are lots of people, by the way, lots of people in the media that say the club are thinking down that road too. Despite what Sport have said here about other keepers having a short list of other options, apparently a lot of people inside the club are really happy with Peña. The way that he trains, apparently he's the first person to arrive the training, the last person to leave, and that's no matter what happens, you know, he hasn't been playing, he hasn't had a chance, but now he has. And he has grasped this opportunity with both hands, he's looked really good, he's looked really strong, imposing at times, and I think he is the best suited keeper right now to replace Ter Stegen during this injury layoff and be the number one right now at Barca. But it is interesting, guys, speaking there about transfers, speaking there about players that we're looking at and the media, there have been lots of reports, I would say, over the past few weeks that Barca are already planning a big signing for the summer transfer window. And that is something we've heard, actually, from multiple different sources. So I'm thinking right now there is something behind this. There is something in that report there that Barca are planning for a big player to arrive this summer. Now, already we're thinking, who exactly might that be? Because, yes, on one hand, you know, it could be Jao Felix. That is the obvious and glaring choice there. Could he be the big money signing in the summer? But I still don't feel as though Barca want to spend the majority of their budget on signing Jao Felix. I think there they want to try and bring that fee down as much as they possibly can and spend as little as possible bringing in Felix from Atletico Madrid. So I don't really think it's actually about him right now. I don't think that's who the media are talking about because I still feel like the big priority for Xavi, it's still that pivot area. He wasn't able to get the long-term option of course back in the summer transfer window last summer. We signed Oriol Romeo as that short-term option and either because we couldn't get the targets that we wanted, they weren't really available, all because we couldn't afford them, Xavi is still looking for his long-term pivot. And I think a lot of us now, looking at the summer ahead of us, it's still several months away, of course we're still talking well ahead of time here, but I think we're all wondering, is it going to be the summer of Kimmich? Is it going to be the summer of Zubi Mendy? I still think, looking at it right now, looking at the way that Xavi wants his team to be, those two names still jump out at me. Those still names for me are very much on Barca's radar, and it's still a question question of, can we actually get them? Are they available? Will they want to leave their current clubs? Of course, Zubi Mendy seem very happy at Real Sociedad. He's having another very, very strong season there. Kimmich, of course, his contract situation at Bayern makes him a very, very interesting option, but I think definitely keep those two in mind. Xavi still wants a pivot. It would be the big signing that he's wanted since last summer, and I think that's where we're heading again. Ahead of the summer, ahead of that big signing, let's wait and see if 
if it is to be a pivot. But what do you guys think there? Looking at the summer to come, looking at the transfer windows ahead of us, if you had to spend a large amount of money somewhere, where would it be? You know, where would your priority be? Because, of course, I think as well, we can't forget about the fullback areas. We need more depth there. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And certainly they're looking at the forward areas too. We've got Roque coming in, signing Felix, signing Cancelo. Those are going to be our priorities too. So let me know, guys, where your big signing would be and who it would be as well. And do let me know down below too. On the Iñaki Peña situation, do you believe he's ready to be the number one in Tar Stegen's absence? Would you put the faith in him? Would you count on him? Let me know all that down below. I will see you soon with more videos to come. Thank you indeed for your support. For all of you guys tuning in, but until next time, as always, Vishka, Hilbasa. Oh.